In today's video, I'm going to show you how to vaccinate chickens against two diseases that many people find tricky to handle. We'll start with foul typhoid and later I'll show you how to vaccinate against foul pox. These two diseases are often confused, so by the end of this video, you'll understand the difference, why vaccination is important, and when and how to vaccinate your chickens. Let's begin with foul typhoid. Today I'm vaccinating my layer chickens, which are currently 8 weeks old. Foul typhoid is a serious bacterial disease. It mainly affects affects growing and adult birds and can cause weakness, pale combs, loss of appetite, reduced growth, and a drop in egg production. In severe cases, it can even lead to death. Foul typhoid spreads mostly through the fecal oral route, which means chickens get infected when they eat or drink feed or water contaminated with feces from infected birds. The disease can also spread through equipment, cages, and even humans if proper hygiene is not observed. Sometimes birds can carry the bacteria without showing signs, acting as silent carriers that infect the rest of the flock. Chicks are initially protected by maternal antibodies passed from the mother hen through the egg. These antibodies help protect the young birds in the first few weeks of life, but they start to decline around four to six weeks. This is why vaccination is usually done after this period, so the bird's immune system can respond effectively and build long-term protection. Some common signs of foul typhoid include lethargy, yellowish diarrhea, pale or swollen combs and wattles, reduced feed intake, poor growth, and lower egg production. Because it is caused by bacteria, it can sometimes be treated with antibiotics, but relying on treatment alone is risky. The disease can spread quickly quickly, and antibiotics may not reach all infected birds, leading to incomplete recovery, resistance, and further losses. That's why prevention through vaccination is much safer and more effective. Vaccinating your birds not only protects them from illness, but also prevents economic losses that can occur from reduced growth, lower egg production, and increased mortality production, and high mortality. Now that we understand why foul typhoid is such a serious disease, let's look at how to vaccinate your chickens against it. I bought the vaccine earlier and kept it in a food flask packed with ice to maintain the correct temperature. Vaccines must always be kept cold to stay effective, so make sure yours is stored properly before and during vaccination. According to the manufacturer's instructions, this vaccine is given at a dose of 1 ml per chicken injected either into the breast muscle or the thigh muscle. I prefer using the thigh because it's easier, safer, and I can do it alone without help. When injecting into the breast, you usually need someone to hold the chicken steady, but with the thigh, you can manage by yourself. Before administering the vaccine, it's important to shake it well so the contents mix properly. I'm using a 5 ml syringe, which allows me to vaccinate 5 chickens at one time, giving each one milliliter. Always check that there are no air bubbles in the syringe before injecting. When injecting, hold the chicken gently but firmly by the thigh. Insert the needle at a slight angle, almost parallel to the thigh bone, not directly toward it. This ensures the vaccine goes into the right place and reduces the risk of injury. Work carefully and steadily, keeping everything clean. By following these steps, you can safely vaccinate your chickens against foul typhoid and protect them from this harmful disease. Vaccination timing is very important for foul typhoid. The vaccine is usually given to chickens around 6 to 8 weeks of age. At this age, maternal antibodies from the mother hen have declined enough for the vaccine to work effectively, but the birds are still young enough to develop strong immunity before they reach the most vulnerable stage. Foul typhoid Typhoid vaccination is mainly given to layers and dual-purpose breeds that stay on the farm for a long time. Broilers, which are raised for meat and leave the farm quickly, usually don't need this vaccine because their time on the farm is too short for the disease to pose a significant risk. After vaccination, it's important to reduce stress and help your birds recover quickly. One way to do this is to provide clean water mixed with glucose and vitamins both before and after vaccination. This helps the chickens cope with any stress caused by handling and ensures they return to normal quickly, staying healthy and productive. Every farm's situation can be slightly different, so vaccination schedules may vary from place to place. The schedule I follow works well for my flock, but whenever you buy chicks, ask your hatchery or supplier for a recommended vaccination program. Using the right schedule for your area ensures your birds are fully protected. Now, let's talk about foul pox. Many people confuse foul pox with foul typhoid, but they are very different diseases. Foul typhoid is caused by 
by bacteria, while foul pox is caused by a virus. This means antibiotics cannot treat foul pox and vaccination is the best way to protect your birds. Foul pox mainly affects the skin around the comb, wattles, eyes, and sometimes inside the mouth and throat. You might notice small scabs or sores that look like pimples or wounds. The disease spreads slowly through mosquitoes, open wounds, or contact with infected birds. While it usually doesn't kill many chickens, it can reduce feed intake, slow growth, and lower egg production, making vaccination very important. The vaccine is usually given from 5 to 10 weeks of age before the birds start laying. At this age, their immune systems are strong enough to respond effectively and they can develop lasting immunity before reaching maturity. Just like with foul typhoid, it's a good idea to ask your hatchery or supplier for a recommended vaccination schedule that fits your area and flock type. Foul pox vaccination is done differently from foul typhoid. Instead of an injection into the muscle, it is given using the wing web method. This involves pricking the thin skin on the inside of the chicken's wing with a small two-pronged applicator or needle dipped in the vaccine. When done correctly, a small swelling or scab forms at the application site, showing that the vaccine is working. Always make sure the vaccine is kept cool and that only healthy birds are vaccinated to ensure maximum effectiveness. Vaccinating your chickens against foul typhoid and foul pox is one of the most important steps to keeping your flock healthy and productive. By following the proper schedules and methods, you can prevent serious disease, reduce stress, and avoid losses in growth and egg production. Remember, foul typhoid is a bacterial disease that can sometimes be treated with antibiotics, but prevention through vaccination is far safer and more effective. Foul pox, on the other hand, is a viral disease, so vaccination is the only reliable way to protect your birds. Understanding the differences between these diseases helps you take the right action at the right time. Always vaccinate at the recommended ages, keep vaccines cool and properly handled, and ensure that only healthy birds are vaccinated. Providing clean water Water with glucose and vitamins before and after handling the birds helps them cope with stress and recover quickly. However, it's important to note that you should never mix glucose or vitamins directly with vaccines given in drinking water, as this can reduce the effectiveness of the vaccine. Vaccines commonly given in drinking water include Newcastle disease, infectious bronchitis, and Gomboro vaccines. These must be administered carefully, following the manufacturer's instructions and using clean equipment. Finally, while vaccination schedule can vary depending on your location and flock type, having a clear plan and following it consistently will make a big difference in your flock's health. Use the schedule I've shared as a guide, but always consult your hatchery or supplier for the best advice for your farm. If you're a beginner looking to get started with poultry, check out my online store to download the beginner's toolkits every new poultry keeper needs using the link in the description. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more poultry videos. Also, check out the video on your screen right now for more about poultry.